Pledge of Allegiance be followed by a moment of silence, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. seniors and record breakers and uh, kids that made it to state so this is just a, a piece of our our puzzle here and um, we at the end of this season broke nine records I believe um, we have um, a relay rec or a relay for the girls a and Maria and Abby and Maddie were on that then we broke a relay record for the boys Will and Reese and Mason Beal and Jeff were on that. And then Mason Brady broke the breaststroke record. And then, this is like testing my memory here. So, <laughs> Abby finished the season uh, breaking five records. Um, and her name is on the board for a couple of others that she broke in previous seasons. So I think we figured out she's graduating with seven records. So that's, um, we think, tied for the most in school history. So that's a pretty big deal. Maddie is graduating with uh, part of three of the relays in the 50 and the 100. So um, just a great group of kids. We also, I shared with the Optimist Club this morning, have three of the four yes. Lily finalists on the swim team also. So they excel in and out of the pool, all of them. So just a great group of kids. We, we love working with them. So. <laughs> Thank you for your hard work. This is one of those groups when I come in in the morning, they have already been here in the pool working out. And when most of us are leaving in the district, they are still in the pool <laughs> working. And a lot of efforts in the way you represent our district. Thank you. Um, and she didn't mention herself, but Coach Brown was once again coach of the sectional um, for the girls. And we've lost track how many years in a row that's been. And we're talking, these are big schools we're up against too, and she represents well. Thank you. Now, I will tell you this, you are certainly welcome to stay. We'd love to have you stay. However, if you would like to egress the building right now, you're welcome to stay. <laughs> We're going to go a little bit out of order here. I'm guessing not everybody's here because of the bond issue. So I wanted to put this out here. The, the personnel report will come up much later in the meeting, but I wanted to let or read this. We talked about this at the board's executive session just to address this right now. This is this regarding Coach Fluger. So if anybody else would like to join the swim team, you're welcome to. If you'd like to stay, your voice will be heard. Coach Fluger resigned as the girls basketball coach on February 14th after serious problems were reported and investigated. As late as this afternoon, the administration team met with Coach Fluger to discuss alternatives to her resignation. After a thorough discussion of her alternatives to resignation, she still chose to resign. 
We appreciate and consider all these communications. So please stay if you feel what you want to. You're welcome to. It will be later in the meeting when we talk about personnel report. And we'll discuss those things there, but I wanted to clarify that for everybody. Fair enough? All right. On to recessing the regular board meeting. We're going to have an open public hearing on the lease for a bond. So if there are no objections, we'll recess the regular board meeting and open the public hearing on the lease. Yeah. Rachel, I'm going to ask for your help on this one. Where do we want to go from here on the, the public hearing on the lease? Sure. Um, well, just a quick rundown. Um, essentially what's happening is that the school is selling the middle school to the building corporation. Okay. We're not selling a school for the public out there. Sure. Sure. Then the school is leasing the middle school back. Those funds are going to be used for some renovations to the middle school. And we're also considering some <coughs> bonding for improvements on, um, on Riddle and on the high school. And so the point of tonight is to get public comment about that procedure, if there is any public comment. Is there any public comment on the leasing of the, we said middle school? Yes. To the building corporation. Any public comment on that? Leasing the middle school from the building corporation for school purposes. Very well. Any public comment on that? There is no public comment. We will uh, move on to the the join the public hearing. Move on to the additional appropriation. The appropriations. Ah, here we go. <coughs> so we need to just join the public meeting, then open the public hearing on additional appropriations. Correct. Mm -hmm. That's not showing up on my. In the process the, uh, of the sale of the bonds, the school corporation will come into uh, something of around eight and a half million dollars uh, in additional funds, uh, 11.53 million dollars in total. Uh, those dollars are not in the current budget for the school and so they will uh, be appropriated through the process it's called an additional appropriation that requires a public hearing, and this is the public hearing to, to determine whether the public has any comments as to whether the additional appropriation should be granted. If the board votes to support it, then it will go to the uh, Department of Local Government Finance for their approval, and then once we get that back and the bonds are sold, then we can start paying bills for the restoration, remodeling, uh, and uh, improvements that are going to go on in the buildings. So are there any comments about the, from the public about additional appropriations? There are no comments about, I didn't see any hands raised, one last chance, any comments about the additional appropriations? Yes, sir. Those are to pay for <coughs> the ones that have already been done, all the work that's been done, or for future? Future work. Okay. All right. The and Mr. Gard, if you would, Christy asked me before the meeting because there will be some people talking. Would you please state your name? We know uh, who you are. Clint Gard, I teach over at the high school. Thank you. It's a nice job once you did six wrestlers to semi state, too, by the way. Thank you. But uh, these will be for the improvements, uh, the Columbia School heating uh, ventilation uh, project. Riddle. The Riddle. Riddle. Columbia's Riddle. already got there. Columbia. The, right. the bond monies that we are seeking right now are for uh, Riddle's mm -hmm. HVAC system to bring it up um, just as we've done at Columbia and at the high school. We are also looking at the middle school gymnasium as part of those renovation projects, the high school auditorium as part of those projects. There is carpet throughout the district that we will be looking at and evaluating in a meeting that we're holding next week to go through the buildings and look at that. <laughs> There's talk, um, depending on where all of the bids come in, whether or not there's money within that to possibly build a weight room for the district to use. 
Um, we're looking at some playground equipment at the elementary schools. The, uh, thank you, the parking lot at Columbia is one of those top priorities that we are investigating will probably be the next thing that we seriously look at and send out to bid. And then the other is we know at some point our uh, student parking lot, the parking lot between the middle and the high school needs some work done to it. So much of that, there's a long wish list of items, much of it will be determined upon what those bids come in at, how much we're going to be able to tackle and chunk off of each of those. I will say, since there are so many people here, that the board's previous and this board as well has done a really nice job. Um, Val and I have been so so thankful the way that it's been set up so that as bonds fall off, we're in the appropriate and proper place to pick up more bonds without there being a tax impact to the community. And that process through what we're doing should continue. Any additional public comment about the additional appropriations? In that case, if there's no objections, we'll adjourn the public hearing and resume the regular board meeting. Uh, first up on the agenda, minutes of the January 15th, 2017 regular board meeting. Any additions, deletions, comments on those minutes? Is there a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. Second. Motion by Jenny, second by Sandy. All in favor of approving the January 15 minutes, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries by zero. <laughs> minutes of the February 12, 2018 study session. Any additions, deletions, or comments about this study session minutes? In that case, is there a motion to approve the minutes of the February 12, 2018 study session? So moved. Motion made by Rick. Second. Second by Stacy. All in favor of approving the February 12th study session minutes, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries five to zero. Certification of the February 12th, 2018 executive session. So any additions, deletions, or comments about the executive session? In the case, is there a motion to approve the certification of the February 12th executive session? So moved. Motion by Jenny. Second. Second by Rick. All in favor of approving the executive session minutes, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries five to zero. Uh, now we're on to part C of the finance report approval of claims 12775 to 12996. So tonight we have um, a 12775 through 12996, totaling one million. $137,222.49 in claims. Payrolls, uh, we have January 19, 2018 at $356,632.70. We have January 24, 2018, $1,435.70. We have February 2, 2018, $392,634.06. And then we have February 16, 2018, $426,753.44. Well, for the, were, ECAs were paid out for, on that one, mm -hmm. on one of those, yes. ECAs are? Extracurricular um, uh, positions such as athletic and academic positions that are um, ongoing throughout the year and um, depending on their pay cycle and then when the um, curricular position, uh, academic or athletic, um, depending on when that position occurs during the school year, then a payout occurs once it's closed. Great, thank you. Do we want to, is there any objection to going with uh, C, subsection one and two, putting those together? Any objections from the board on that? In that case, is there a motion to approve C, financial report, subsection one and subsection two payrolls? Motion made by Stacy. Second. Second by Sandy. All in favor of approving those, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries five to zero. Funds report. So our general fund, we started the year with $480,191.95. We had $1,004,857.61 worth of receipts. Our expenses for the month of January were $895,483.02, leaving us an ending balance of $589,566.54. 
We're a little down year over year, but we've got some really good opportunities that um, are coming down the pike of some um, cost savings. Um, so it's literally just a timing factor to get those into play. So to be continued on that one. Debt service fund um, started with the year at $2,108,007.77. We had $96,702.14 worth of receipts. No expenses for the month, leaving us an ending balance of $2,204,709.91. Our receipts um, for January, we have um, um, subsidy bonds, our QSAP bonds, um, and the funding for that normally comes in, in December, and it wasn't until January 2nd that those checks came in. So um, typically we get that 96000 in December, so that's why we've got it in January. Capital projects fund started with $1,019,011.94, had 5696 dollars worth of receipts. Expenses for the month were $156,811.03, leaving us an ending balance of $867,897.83. Oh, and you'll have to disregard, my apologies, um, our 2018 appropriations have been approved, um, and I went back and put them in, but there's a little note that they were not approved, so initially it did not have appropriations in, and then while working on this, they were approved, so handy. Okay. Uh, transportation fund started with $1,060,903.30. We had 2,598 dollars worth of receipts. Expenses for the month were $41,340.47, leaving us an ending balance of $1,022,161.80. Last but not least is our bus replacement fund. We started with $140,988.91. We had $664.54 worth of receipts. No expenses for the month, leaving us an ending balance of $141,653.45. Any questions on the cash flows? Okay. Our 2017 fund review, um, financial review presentation oops, is on a PowerPoint. Uh, typically, um, at year end, um, what I like to do is go through and do an evaluation of um, where did our money go for 2017. So this is available uh, for anyone interested. It's available on our board docs website through our school website, www.zebras.net. Um, and you, you go to the top, it's got a little um, school board tab, hop down into public and you can view this on uh, tonight's meeting agenda. So. It might be really small to read for you guys in the back, so I apologize for that. But um, it's an overall a really good handy recap of um, if you ever wanna know about school finance and where our money goes, um, this is it to a T. So for 2017, um, majority of our funding for general fund comes from the basic grant, the funding from the state that we receive. Um, we have some transfers where we were able to, um, through the 2015 bonds that we have issued, we um, some of those monies were for training of um, learning the new equipment and for personnel to learn that. So that's some of those transfer monies. Um, so about to clarify, that's yeah. not transfer students. No, 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 exactly. And that's why I did want to touch on that because that is kind of, a, um, can easily be confused. But um, no, transfer students, that money comes from the state and that would be included with our basic grant dollars. Um, we have before and after school program revenue, um, summer school that we get, again, funding from the state um, because of our, um, and our summer school program that we run, uh, that we run during the school year. Um, see. Use of facilities, earned interest, um, earned interest, excuse me, tongue tight. Earned interest was big for us this year. We, uh, the board had made the decision to go with Teachers Credit Union and our interest that we're earning is astronom astronomically great. Um, and that all goes to general fund for a good cause. And so that was a great proactive move on that end. Um, that's where, and, and then again, a pie graph to show um, how that relates uh, for the general fund. There's same rundown version and a pie graph. And then next is debt service. 
So uh, money comes in, local property taxes. Um, again, there's that CUSA federal subsidy that we get dollars in for repaying um, a loan, uh, a local option property tax replacement, license excise taxes, commercial vehicle excise tax, financial institutions. Sometimes it just feels like you get taxed to death, but at the same time, this is, you know, this is where report goes. Um, just like with the 2018 bonds that we're getting ready to issue and get finalized, it goes towards a good cause. We're doing proactive maintenance, preventive maintenance on our buildings that need it. We're replacing things. We're, you know, keep, we're taking care of the things that we have, and we repay it through this debt service fund. And then expenses are the repayments of those bonds. Um, we've got, you know, the just like with any loan, you have principal and interest. Uh, we are able to uh, capture the textbook reimbursement from uh, that we don't that we that the state literally plum, um, that the state doesn't reimburse us. Then we're able to get the difference and um, apply that towards our textbook uh, rental fund. Next, capital projects. This is where we're able to um, maintain our buildings with the local tax dollars that we receive. Uh, we received over 1.4 million in local property taxes. Um, and then what uh, my new favorite revenue source is on CPF is the Duke Energy rebates. So as we work on um, going to more energy efficient um, units, HVAC units, heating and air, lighting, um, our contractor and our engineer, and our architects are applying for the rebates that Duke Energy provides. And for 2017, we received 47,000 in um, energy rebate credits. Um, literally checks of, you know, as, as a being good stewards of those resources. Um, and then again, expenditures, we're able to um, utilize capital projects fund for quite a bit of the utility costs that we are experienced throughout the district, uh, lighting, HVAC, and things like that. So that comes out of capital projects. We've got sports facility upkeep, technology um, is paid out of capital projects. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory, but the pie graph is, I'm a visual person and the pie graph, you know, really puts um, numbers to the pie as far as, you know, of, of the whole pie, how big of a chunk um, are those funds utilized in what area? Transportation, again, um, is funded from local property taxes. Uh, we do get some reimbursement for events um, as well, but um, pretty much break down from there. And let's see, expenditures, of course, transportation salaries, the fuel, the oil, the, um, the software to run and make sure all the kids are picked up in, in a, an appropriate manner and the fuel and the oil and everything of upkeeping of the buses is paid out of transportation. And then last but not least is bus replacement. Um, again, property tax funded. From there, this is a pretty cut and dry one because the only thing you can, for the most part, buy with your bus replacement fund is buses. So, uh, 2017, we purchased three buses, and that was about $316,173. So um, when we start advertising and having those discussions for our 2019 budget, um, there will be two funds. Well, I should, um, let me back up. There'll be three funds. There'll be um, general fund is getting renamed as educational fund. We'll still have debt service. And then um, the transportation, CPF, and bus replacement are going to be combined into one fund and, and called um, operational fund. So that was done through the last legislative session where um, the goal was to allow more, um, allow this each school corporation to use the funds in a manner that is necessary to kind of free up those. Right now, only capital projects can't be used to pay for transportation. Well, by combining that into one fund that it gives us more allowances and capabilities. So to stay tuned for that. We'll have more discussions on that over the summer as we prepare and advertise and get out the 2019 budget. So that's a quick update on that aspect. Any questions or comments for the funds for the financial and financial review? 
In that case, is there a motion to approve the funds report? So moved. Motion made by Jenny. Stacy Beach. Second by Stacy. All in favor of approving the funds report is given. Please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries five to zero. The end of the year financial review was for discussion and information only. Next on the agenda is the allowance of end of the year transfers. So at the end of, or I'm sorry, at the December school board meeting, um, the board had voted and approved the um, allowance of the year end procedures to take place. Um, they've since taken place. And what we have are, um, that I'm reporting on tonight is the inter and intra fund transfers. So the great news is we did not exceed our budget and the inter fund transfers just represents um, of our appropriations, which is our permission to spend money that, um, again, we go through that budget advertising phase um, and wait for the Department of Local Government and Finance to approve our budget. Well, um, some of the budget lines were overspent, some of the budget lines were underspent, and through that year-end process, it gets cleaned up. The, un the ones that were overspent are fixed with the ones that were underspent. And it's a glorious accounting process of reporting for all of that and accounting for it all. So the inter fund transfers are, um, are for informational only. The intra fund transfers, <coughs> I, um, I have to um, report to the board and then upon approval, um, from the board that I will from there report it to our county auditor because what we had done is go we went over a, um, a program area that we had budgeted for uh, mind you we didn't over exceed our allowed budget but because we went outside of those projects that it has to get reported and um, put on record and file so it was more than 400,000 extra in the general fund it was 400,000 spent in an area outside that we had budgeted for. But it, so not total from the general fund was more than 400,000. It's It was within a, it, within a line program. item. Yes, from because if you do a 1,000 to 1,999, that's okay. But because the, uh, for instance, one, uh, 10,000 was still had appropriations that were overexpended, so, I, so we had to go to 20,000. Okay. Gotcha. To, to, to clean it up. So still within the general fund, but within exactly. those different designations. Exactly. Okay, exactly. thank you. It is, it is very confusing. School but finance is its own beast. It <laughs> Any further questions of Al for allowance of the end of the year transfers? In that case, is there a motion to approve the allowance of the end of the year transfers? So moved. Motion made by Sandy. Second. Second by Rick. All in favor of approving the allowance into your transfers, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries five to zero. Next, approving the table claim docket of Peterson Wagner and Perkins invoices 2016-0923-0532 and 2016-0923-0456. Any questions or comments about that from anyone on the board? Is there a motion to approve the table claim from Peterson Wagner and Perkins? Motion made by Stacy. Second. Second by Sandy. All in favor of approving the table claim doc from PWP invoices as given. Please signify by raising your right hand. Any nays? Oh, sorry. Okay, so all <laughs> in favor of approving the motion, please signify by raising your right hand. Okay, motion carries five to zero. I don't mean to, I didn't think so, but I wanted to make sure. This is there an uh, approved credit to be applied towards the claim dockets previously mentioned by Peter Schreiger and Perkins? Is there a motion? Is there any questions or comments on that from the board? Is there a motion to approve the credit to be applied towards the claim docket invoices as stated before? So moved. Motion made by Rick. Second. Second by Stacy. All in favor of approving the approved motion to approve the credit to be applied towards the claim docket stated before? Please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries five to zero. Student and stakeholder focus. Are there any more besides the one I have on my sheet? All right. I say this every time, but we finally have a crowd where it can mean something. As always, we appreciate, appreciate all the community with their donations they give to our kids. It uh, goes a long way, and there's some things the school corporation can't offer that our community does. So 
sincerely. I know RTV RCC4 is here, the Sentinels here. On behalf of the board, thank you to everyone who donates to the school corporation. It is, it is sincerely appreciated. Uh, some of the donations given this month, VEN Enterprises for RHS Engineering class, $31.42. Ladies of the First Christian Church, socks for middle school girls. Nubianos one free pizza for the RMS Art Show winner. And anonymously given gift cards to Subway, Taco Bell, and Wendy's for the RMS Art Show winners. No additions. Nothing. Questions of general donations? In that case, is there a motion to approve the donations as presented? So moved. Motion made by Sandy. Second by Jenny. All in favor of approving the motions as, or I'm sorry, the donations as given, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries by to zero. Overnight field trip. Um, if we could begin, I would like to do the out of state field trip first with um, Adam being able to share about a grant that, that Rochester High School received and the opportunity that we're going to be able to give a couple of our classes at the high school, if you would. Um, um, we received a uh, grant. Uh, that's going to allow all of our sophomore and junior students to see uh, the musical Hamilton in Chicago uh, at a reduced cost. So it's only $10 per ticket for those students to be able to see that uh, production. So um, we will have to take our students out of state in order for them uh, to get to the theater. Is that this year's sophomores and juniors or next year's Yes, so the, the year's trip so will be May 23rd, uh, so the day saw before a lot final smiles. exams. <laughs> I want to make sure they knew where we were going. I saw a lot of smiles on some younger faces out there, so I want to make sure they knew. Mr. Strunk, do you feel comfortable sharing about how this came about? Uh, sure. We had a student, uh, a junior student named Gabby Goss, who found this grant opportunity, actually, and filled out the application, and then we uh, were accepted. Uh, through our program. So as part of this, our sophomore and junior students will uh, complete a week-long curriculum prior to going that's based on uh, the Founding Fathers and uh, items from the musical. And then as a, uh, a capstone of that project, each student will create um, a performance that we will videotape and then turn in uh, to this company and then they will choose from the students going to each, pr each uh, production the five or six best ones and show them to the theater prior to the play start. Is there any way, I know I can't stick you to this because the seniors will be like what Mr. Strasser said, is there any way the seniors can go? We have... Um, You're welcome Ms. Dockwist. <laughs> <laughs> we have 250 uh, tickets available and we need to start with sophomores and juniors. Um, if there are any available past that, we will look at uh, students that have been part of our th uh, theater program uh, to be able to use those extra tickets. Thank you, sir. Any other questions for Mr. Strasser? I'm so excited for this dance. <laughs> I case. wish that I had not already spent the money on the Christmas present. <laughs> <laughs> I need the $10. Exactly. $10 is much better. Yeah. Uh, do we want to go with the second? Is there any objection to doing the second field trip as well, or do we want to prove these independently? Yeah. Any objection to approving both or asking about both of them at the same time? <coughs> In that case? The second field trip is proposed by Jenny Snyder. Um, it's an FCCLA leadership conference. It's an annual conference where those students involved in that organization are allowed to go to the state present uh, projects. They cover a realm of topics and ideas and it's a great opportunity for them to be able to, to um, share their presentations with other FCCLA members across the state, be judged on those projects. We've been uh, very successful in the past and I think it's a great culmination uh, for those students to be able to bring that to fruition. We've been many, many years in a row and never had any incidents or problems. Is Mrs. Snyder here or is she at home? She's watching that. Watching the three girls. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's why you spoke on her band. Any questions of Mrs. Vance about the FCCLA trip? In that case, is there a motion to approve both the Hamilton field trip and the FCCLA field trip? Second. Motion made by Jenny. Is there a second? Second. Second by Sandy. All in favor of approving the overnight field trips as stated, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries five to zero. Information and analysis of Section 80 adopt. Can I do, I need to do these all independently or I do them all at once or? Independently. Independently, all right. Subsection one, 
adopt a resolution authorizing execution of lease and demonstrating total cost per project. Um, is there any comments, questions on that? In that case, is there a motion to adopt? And then I missed Mrs. Arndt, I'm sorry, Dr. Arndt. <laughs> told me that these to tell you that these are all available online under zebras.net is that correct to make sure if anybody wants to look at them or see them they are there that's right is there a motion to adopt the resolution authorizing execution of lease and demonstrating total cost per project there is so I'm so moved very good okay. motion made by rick second, second by stacy all in, in favor of approving adopting the resolution authorizing execution of lease and demonstrating total cost per project please signify by raising your right hand Motion carries five to zero. Adopt a resolution appropriating the proceed, proceeds and establishing the construction fund. Any questions or comments about adopting that resolution? In that case, is there a motion to adopt the resolution appropriating the proceeds and establishing the construction fund? So moved. I'll go with Sandy. Sandy first on that one. And is there a second? Second. Second by Jenny. All in favor of approving, adopting the resolution, appropriating the proceeds and establishing the construction fund, please signify by raising your right hand. She carries five to zero. Adopting a resolution, reapproving formation of the building corporation. Are there any questions or comments about adopting the resolution, reapproving the formation of the building corporation? In that case, is there a motion to approve the adoption of the resolution, reapproving formation of the building corporation? Motion made by Stacy. Second. Second by Rick. All in favor of approving the resolution. Re wow. All in favor of adopting the resolution, reapproving the formation of the building corporation, please signify by raising your right hands. Motion carries five to zero. Adopt a resolution assigning construction bids to a building corporation once received. Are there any questions or comments about that? In that case, is there a motion to adopt the resolution assigning construction bids to a building corporation once received? So moved. Motion made by Stacy. Second. Second by Sandy. All in favor of approving, adopting the resolution assigning con construction bids to a building corporation once received, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries five to zero. Adopt a resolution to approve master continuing disclosure undertaking and approving the issuance of, bond, issuance of bonds. Is there are there any questions or comments about that? In that case, is there a motion to adopt resolution to approve the master continuing disclosure undertaking and approving issuance of bonds? So moved. Motion made by Rick. Second. Second by Jenny. All in favor of approving, adopting the resolution to approve master continuing disclosure undertaking and approving the issuance of bonds, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries five to zero. Adopt post issuance procedures if not previously done. Are there any questions or comments about that? In that case, is there a motion to adopt post issuance procedures if not previously done? So moved. Motion made by Stacy. Second. Second by Rick. All in favor of approving, adopting the post-issuance post procedures if not previously done, please signify by raising your right hand. Any opposed? Okay. Just for the record, if you're in favor of that, please signify by raising your right hand. Okay. Motion carries five to zero. Approval of riddle, I know, but I want to make sure we do it right. Approval of riddle HVAC bid to upon approval of the 2018 bonds. Is there, are there any questions or comments about that? What was the, what we had, set up we, that? we had three contractors who submitted sealed bids. They were opened in a public forum. The first contractor was D.A. Dodd. Their total bid came in at $2,933,300. E.J. White, um, their bid was $2,615,000. And Herman and Getz, uh, their bid came in at $2,905,000. Uh, we spent a great deal of time after the opening of the bid setting down and talking to Terry Thornsberry. Brad Carter was there to go through those plans. Um, we spent some further time uh, the next few days making sure that everything was included. E.J. White was a new name to me, but what I didn't realize and was explained to me is they were the contractors for this, this building that we're setting in right now and had really good rapport and reports with them and from them. 
So our um, recommendation to the board would be to go with the E.J. White uh, bid at $2,615,000. This comes in under our estimated bid. We, we had set aside $3.1 million within the bond project, thinking that was going to have to go towards that. So this came in under that. So that gives us more room and flexibility for those other things that we would like to engage in. But our recommendation would be for E.J. White. Further questions or comments, Jana, about the approval of the HVAC bid contingent upon it? You may want to recall that it is contingent, so the bonds must sell um, and the money must be received before the contract will be signed by Jana. Thank you. And the reason behind that is so that way we can pay the bill. We can do it get on their schedule so we're not behind the eight right. ball on their schedule. Yeah. Okay, any qu further questions or comments about those? In that case, is there a motion to approve the real HVAC bid contingent upon approval of the 2018 bonds? Okay. Motion made by Stacy. Is there a second? Okay. Second by Sandy. All in favor of approving the riddle HVAC bid contingent upon approval of the 2018 bonds, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries 5 0. Third reading of various policies. Okay. Upon this reading and then subject to our vote and approval, that means these policies would go into effect. These are all on our website at zebras.net on the front page if you would like to look at them. I'll briefly go over them. Policy 0122 is um, no change in policy. It's a, it was a change that was in stat, or it is a change in policy. It was a change that was enacted in statute um, restating home rule. Uh, policy 2510 is about setting um, when we rebate money, like textbook money, that kind of thing, and what the low amount that we will refund for that is. Policy uh, 5200 is an, the attendance policy, and it makes sure that we are um, we are adding back. Actually, we never took it away. This is this is cleaning up of our policy that. Uh, people, students, and this mainly affects the high schools that are absent from our school and they're not on an actual school field trip, so they're not going to Hamilton, but they are not in the school building, they still can be counted there for um, organizations, for programs that the corporation deems uh, <coughs> appropriate is, is advancing our goal. So in, and I see a lot of our FCYLE students here tonight, that's an example of that, Bolt County Leadership Academy, they're not really counted absent even though they're not in school. Um, policy 5461 is um, about substitutes. 5840 is, <laughs> this is a long policy and many changes, but all of the changes are changing the word gang to organization. The 8531 <coughs> is um, changing in the free and reduced lunch policy, changing needy to eligible. And 8540 is about vending machines and um, what we have in them and what times they're open. That's it? That's it. That's it. So that is the third reading of various policies upon approved motions and acceptance of people in the vote. Correct. Very well. Any further questions or comments for Jenny? In that case, is there a motion to approve the third reading of those policies? No. Motion made by Sandy. Is there a second? Second. Second by Stacy. All in favor of approving those policies as stated, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries five to zero. First reading of the policy change in high school PE issuance. Yeah, that's fine if you'd like to, but I, I, I just wanted to share that babe, this policy is very much an indication of when parents um, can bring things to administrative attention, when it's for the betterment of the district and for the school as a whole. Um, it is a great opportunity, and I've got a great leadership team that has an open mind. We can sit down, we can look at those, but felt that this was uh, brought to Adam and his team, and we feel like this is a good change for our district. And so, Jenny, if you don't mind sharing, or Adam, it doesn't doesn't matter and we can answer any questions if you have Jenny's on it the just what I finished reading is we work through a company called Neola and those are um, changes that we we must do due to new laws um, 
they look at court cases and help us revise our policies. But just like Mrs. Smith <coughs> says, this next one is one that we have, but the change is sparked by a um, parent who asked questions about it, and then when talking with administrators and figuring out that, no, we can make, we can make this change to make it better for our students. So our physical education waiver, we have a physical education waiver at the high school, which meaning if you participate in sports, then you can apply to have your general PE um, be counted as, uh, your coach can grade you and that can count as your general PE credit. Previously, our stipulation included on number four that you could only um, earn one credit per sport. So if you did one sport but did it all four years, you could only get one credit. We are proposing that we strike that sentence. So therefore, if you choose to um, do one sport your whole career, you can, if you wanted to apply for that waiver and you've earned that with your coach, you could get both of your PE credits that way. But no more than two. Correct, because this is for the general PE credit right. and that's two. Um, this is the first reading, and when we do policies, we do them three times, and then we vote, and then they go into effect. Um, so, and we comment or have any questions. In, in the interest of that, you know, I'm gonna look at Ted when I say it. We don't have two members here, but we can do the first and second if there are no objections to the readings, correct? Right. And the reason why we would do that, I don't wanna do the third one, unless most of the members are here, at least give it time for people to digest, but I wanna put it on the track, so that way parents can schedule, because they're getting ready to schedule, classes for next year and they can do anticipate if so and so plays girls tennis then they don't have to worry about scheduling a gym class they can take another class. Did I say that correctly? Correct. Mm -hmm. So and there we any, would begin so this the 2018-2019 um, academic year. So next, this next fall. Correct. And it would go in place for all, all eligible students. high school students. Level. Is there any objection to doing the first and second reading all at once for any of the board members? In that case, is there a motion to approve the first and second reading of the policy change in the high school PE credit? Uh, Stacy first. Is there a second? I'll second it. Sandy second. All in favor of approving the first and second reading of the policy change in the high school PE credit, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries five to zero. And I assume at our next public board meeting, the third reading will be on there, so it'll be okay. <coughs> Faculty and staff focus. The personnel report. Okay, this is why you're all here. I'm going to read this one more time just so you understand. No way, you can get it in the paper for me, okay? Try to get the quote quote correct. Coach Pfluger resigned as a girls' basketball coach on February 14th after serious problems were reported and investigated. As late as this afternoon, the administration team met with Coach Pfluger to discuss alternatives to her resignation. After a thorough discussion of her alternatives to resignation, she still chose to resign. We appreciate and consider all communication. And speaking for myself, I know I received several emails, and I really appreciate those. I do because just like the policy with the PE change, your voice can be heard. I will caution social media and things like that because we all know how things on social media can be blown out of proportion. So why we can't discuss the facts per se because of a school employee, you are going to be allowed to be heard. This is a public meeting, and so it shall be. Um, I guess we should probably do the personnel report first and then accept public comment. So we'll pull the public, the personnel report up. And don't worry, I will get to that. For the personnel report, hiring Cindy Hart, full time high school full time custodian. Is it Ian or Ian? Ian. Ian Reamer, bus driver. Resignations, Don Best, Real School Cafeteria Food Service, effective January 17, 2018. Brandy Young, middle school nurse, the last day will be, was February 13th, 2018. And Kathleen Davis, instructional assistant, the last day was February 23rd, 2018. Family medical leave, Deb Tyler, Riddle, fifth grade, December 11th, 2017, for approximately four weeks. And family medical leave, Dana Tucker, high school belly technician, February 28th, March 1st, 2nd, and 9th, 2018. Maternity leave, Linda Arnett, August 1st, 2018, through November 9th, 2018, returning November 12th, 2018. Spring intercession, Leslie Strim at Riddle, Angie Smith at Riddle, Jolene Rohr at Riddle, and Tracy Monocle at, as a Riddle instructional assistant. The academic team sponsor, Pam Brower, the middle school math academic team, replacing Chris Cox. Columbia Summer Reading Program Director, Lauren Atkinson. Athletic coaching recommendations, Alex Gudeman as a head middle school track coach. 
Dan Bailey is a co-head golf coach, and Lindy Lunau is a volunteer sixth grade girls basketball coach. Athletic resignations, Brian Hooker from the middle school track assistant coach, and I assume there are some additions to this that are not here. Um, next, you'll go back to your um, board jobs. I know that was as of today. That was yeah, this afternoon. At the bottom. There we go. No, oh, I read the wrong one. Okay. No, this. And then in addition to, to it, added at 5:30 today, resignation Lisa Fluger as the girls' basketball coach. Okay. And, then we'll and there's, there's, there's like five more attachments. They only got also Come on, well. I didn't do this. I'm, not <coughs> I'm just teasing you. Just trying to help. Uh, there's a revised personnel report. Starting with Thomas. There you go. Hirings. Thomas Wojcic, Wojcicin, Columbia full-time night custodian, Ashley Beck, middle school nurse. Resignations, Courtney Redden, Columbia instructional assistant. The last day will be February 23rd, 2018. And athletic resignation, Jessica Hoffman, middle school girls assistant basketball coach, effective immediately. Any others? Yeah. Brad, do you want to handle all of those first and then handle the uh, 530? Report. Yes, I'd be happy to. We'll do that. Just so the audience understands, but unless there's objections from the board, we'll handle all the personnel recommendations with the exception of Coach Fluzer's rec recognition, rec resignation. We'll do that after these. Is there any objections? In that case, is there a motion to approve the personnel report as given, excluding Coach Fluzer's resignation? So moved. Okay, Mo I have a question. I'm sorry. Yeah. Is the Dan Bailey, is that boy the girl? Is it the head coach? Boy. I'm boy. sure it's boys, but. Make sure Go ahead, golf coach. Okay, so motion made by Rick to approve the personnel report with the exception of Coach, coach Fluger. Is there a second? Second by Stacy. All in favor of approving the personnel report with the exception <laughs> of Coach Fluger's resignation, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries five to zero. Okay, I know a lot of you are here to talk about Coach Fluger's resignation, and this is a public hearing, so you shall be heard. There are some stipulations, and Ted, if I miss one, please let me know. Please don't <coughs> mention any students' names, okay? Please state your name so we know who you are. I know I know most of you in here, but my eyesight's not as good as it used to. I may not be able to see all the way at the back. And please limit your comments to three minutes. I'm guessing a lot of people would like to talk. Anything else? In that case, would anybody like to speak, or is there any public discussion about the resignation of Coach Fluger? Yes. I have to say that I'm really disappointed. I feel like our girls. May I have please have your name? Oh, I'm sorry, Dana Bright. My daughter's on the basketball team. I really feel like this is a big disappointment. I think we've robbed all of our younger girls of a rich experience. I know she made a mistake, and I'm not disputing that. But I really feel like this was blown out of proportion. I mean, I don't want any child in danger. Any, you know, my daughter included. But I just feel like this really got out of hand, and I'm really, really disappointed. I think it's, it's just it's a shame. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Okay, Debbie Frost. Um, I have a daughter who's an athletic trainer. I have a son-in-law, daughter-in-law <laughs> in the coaching and teaching positions in Fort Wayne. I talked to them about the situation and. If there's any problems, their their um, solution is expulsion, immediate expulsion. And you know, hopefully, we're in a community that that doesn't have to happen. But in light of what went on last week, we can, I don't I don't feel like we can risk that for any of our kids. And I don't care who it is. I don't want anybody that. Um, didn't mean to do something to be you know I don't want I don't want them to be ruined for life however there are consequences and as an adult the adult has to step up and whether it's a coach or a person anybody has to step up and say hey we might have a problem we need to address it and no matter who the person is good bad I don't think this person any anybody's bad however I think that the situation need to be addressed, and rules are rules for a reason. That's all. Josh Isbell. I'm sorry, Josh Isbell. Thank you. Um, 
we as parents have to trust in our coaches school board and the teachers and right here we're not trusting in our coach that we had she was pushed to the point she resigned the students or the I don't want to call them a team because it doesn't seem like a team they're kids that play ball last year they had a losing season she turned it around to a winning season over one mistake these kids have blown this out of proportion and made her the victim I know my daughter grew close to this coach she had an impact on her now she's going to lose that so whoever it was in fact I know who it was but I won't say we're not supposed to thank you thank you My name is Allison Reinhold. I'm here as a parent and as a teacher in support of our students, our staff, and our coaches. I've watched some of the finest examples of our mission statement, teaching others to learn, grow, and give, leave our kids by choice or by force. Leadership, learning, growing, and giving all involve one key element, discipline. To be a successful leader, one must be both positive and disciplined. They must hold themselves as well as those they lead to a standard of excellence and encourage them to keep working toward that standard. This involves establishing rules. Growth and learning come from failures and successes. Having the self-discipline to continue working toward goals without giving up is where our growth and learning take place. Successful leaders know that preparing and giving of themselves and teaching these key life elements are much more meaningful than win and loss columns. Leadership, when based in fear and insecurity, results in a sense of entitlement, micromanagement, and distrust. <coughs> Fear-led leadership looks and feels like bullying. Our kids feel it, and they see it. They use it because it's what's been modeled to them. When we limit a leader's ability to do their job, we set ourselves up for losses in more than just columns on a stat sheet. Leading from fear results in only one thing, nothing. No changes, no improvements, and no growth. Discipline is where confidence is born. Perseverance, staying with that goal without giving up because it gets hard or because there are negative consequences along that journey is a trait enhanced by having a disciplined, strong, passionate, and encouraging leader. A leader's example of giving more of him or herself ultimately gives our students a competitive advantage in life. Everyone works together to achieve a goal. It's not about self, it's not about championships, it's about teaching others to give up themselves, ultimately ensuring our students have firm foundation and future leadership roles. It's about so much more than sports. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, David Musselman, fix it. Take just a little bit of one, two, fix it. Jones. I watched Coach Fluger work these girls. I watched the all-in the whole entire season. She gave 150% to these girls, and these girls gave 150% to her. And one little mistake should not be a punishment for any of these girls or for Coach Fluger. Thank you. My name is Linda Richard. I just I, I don't understand the procedure of hiring a coach. I seen where there was a parent that set in on hiring this coach. I don't know who that parent was. Who was that? That's the help was picked by our AD and our admin staff to handle. We have since talked about that about the hiring process. Yeah, I, is it common knowledge? Because I don't know who it was. Uh, you're making it is common knowledge, but I'm not going to answer that question. Is there a reason? Because my lawyer just told me I shouldn't. Oh, really? <laughs> <coughs> Why is that? Well, you got to understand, too. There is, no, when I, it comes I, to, and I'm, I'm happy to talk about that because it's a frustrating for me as a school board member. We protect our employees, and we should. I would rather the facts get out there. We could give them to you as we see fit. However, due to policy and legal matters and laws, we can't talk about what the employer, any employee, did. It's frustrating for me because there's in several occasions I wish we could talk about those things, but unfortunately we have to sit here and not do that. And I say unfortunately from the standpoint that I'd love to reply, or the board would love to reply, but we have to protect our employees as well, and should. 
and that's why we're doing it this way. So was the employee, the parent, an employee? The parent was not an employee. Okay. Is that what you were implying, though? No, no ma'am. I'm just letting you know the process that these things are investigated by the superintendent. So, is it always the process to have an will, input I'm, of the employee, or is it always the process? Is it always the process to have the input of a parent? To, no, it's not. No. In fact, that was discussed, and I'm sure Mrs. Vance and her admin team are discussing that as well. Okay, so now. Moving forward, how long will it take to get a new coach? I don't know. As a board, we let our CEO and her admin team do their job. You have to talk to Mr. March or Mr. Strauss or Mr. Vance. They'll bring a recommendation to us, and we as a board will vote on the thing. Yes, ma'am. Kathy Watson, I'm a parent of a middle school basketball player. Sad, heartbroken, disappointed, and angry were four words that my girl said after hearing about the decision. I don't know the extent the circumstances and it's none of my business i want you to know may, many of you may or may not know the dedication that coach fluger has put into our middle school program she's in away games she's at attorneys she's there during the weekends when our girls played at the zone helping coach sitting on our sidelines not everybody gets to experience what our girls have been able to experience the dedication that we have had in one coach in a program in her short time is something that is unbelievable most schools do not get that i've been in different school corporations i've seen it our girls are fortunate to have learned what they learn it's one team one mission one herd and we're all in thank you yes ma'am anya mckee mother of a varsity basketball player what are we going to do when it gets around the state that rochester is in a place to come coach who are we going to get? Mr. Martz, Mrs. Vance, you need to get on the phone after this meeting and figure out how to get Coach Bluger back. I think everyone here agrees with me. And Mr. Martz, it's very sad that you could not even show up to a meeting with the girls basketball team this morning that you agreed to. Gentlemen and ladies of the board, I'm Kathleen Isbell, and I'd like to tell this board that Coach Fluger was a very good coach. She took those girls to a winning season this year. All of us make mistakes. Every one of us in this room makes little mistakes, and we're not all perfect, and everybody tries their best. We need a coach like Coach Fluger. Um, Karina Peterson, I am an upcoming senior the next year, and I know you all are like, yeah, we had a winning season, but I've never seen our team closer. Like, I don't care that we won a lot of games. Like, Please, if you would, and I appreciate your courage for Sam talking. We're not going to make this an accusatory yeah, I know. versus them. Please address the board, and thank you. All right. Um, I just want to say that as like an upcoming senior, I've never seen our team closer. Um, my past three years, I would have never talked to the girls I talked to this year. And I just think that Coach Flieger brought us all together in a way that I don't think any coach could have. Thank you. Any other comment? Yes. Mike Musselman. Yes, sir. Um, I guess I just want to ask the board. Have any of you ever made a mistake in your life? And did you get a second chance if you made that mistake? <coughs> yes, my name's uh, Greg Batten. My daughter's on the uh, on the high school team. She's a freshman. And obviously, you took the air out of the room when you uh, said that she had already resigned. So there's some things that I was going to say that I probably will not now. But I, I really think that everyone needs to try to learn from this experience and how it was handled and look at but hire, if you are going to go through a hiring process, especially when you have a, a person that's not in school every day, they don't recognize, maybe recognize all the rules. There are things that have changed. I'm 48. I mean, when people used to go to school when they were 20, 
you know, it's a lot different. So when you bring someone in from outside of the, uh, the corporation, which isn't a bad thing. I mean, obviously with the people that are standing up, she had, she had great support and she had great skills at what she did. But you also put them in a position to where they not be, may not be as adequately trained or actually shown what is relevant and not relevant in, in situations that occur. So I just really think that people need to consider that when you start looking for a new coach or if you try to you know, work on getting her back. But you, know, you don't wanna go down this road again. Obviously everybody makes mistakes. Let's try to learn from our mistakes in this too, if we did make any and make sure that these girls get the coach and the people that they deserve because they're, they're a fantastic group of people. And everybody from the parents, the players, everyone is a really good group of people and they deserve, deserve to have a good opportunity here at Rochester. Thanks. Thank you. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Dave Talfist. Um, my daughter was on the basketball team. I just want to ask a question. There's probably an answer I could ask a coach, but in this corporation, do the coaches have training dealing with all kinds of situations that happen and what they're expected to do? I want to defer to Mrs. Vance, Mr. Strasser, Mr. Marshall. Well, every coach is required to have coaches education and uh, they have to go through the employee sign off sheet that goes through that okay and does that deal with harassment all those kinds of different things and what they're expected to do yes, it okay I just want to make sure Emails from people that really the audience who I won't name, but I do appreciate the communication there. I know the other board members did too. Speak and you'll be heard. Any other comments? Yes. Amanda Porter, I'm a mom of a player, and it's really sad that like all these other parents that are standing here, you're ruining a program that she built in one season, all the way from third grade to eighth grade, and even in high school. These girls actually got along and played together really well this year and last year, but this year she's made a massive turnaround. You guys are taking away this from not just the girls that are playing basketball next year, but the girls that are gonna be playing basketball for many years to come. You guys are not just screwing, you guys are screwing the program and the girls, your daughters, that are in junior high, high school, you are ruining the program. She is amazing. She loved our kids like they were her kids. You're taking away their hope, their drive, and their dreams of playing basketball. I want you guys to go to bed at night and think about what you're doing, not to just the program, but to these girls. They love this program, they love basketball since they were babies. Most of them have played together since they were little. I don't know what you guys need to do, but you need to fix it. Get her back. Because you're not going to find anybody else that's going to get these girls to play like a unity, like a family. One herd. That's all I have to say. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Any other public comments? Yes. Can I just read the email that I sent? <clears throat> Did I read the email that I sent? Sure, you can do it. This is a public meeting. You're allowed to. All right. I'm Andrea Howdeshell. I'm a mother of a middle schooler and a child of Riddle. Um, first of all, I'd like to say I understand. I do not know all the details of this situation. From what I do know, it appears there was an unfortunate situation and a coach did not follow the parameters that are set for these situations. It seems it may, it may have been handled in more of an old school, if you will, kind of way. In the times we now live in, this can't happen. However, I do think in these times we live in, that people should still be offered an opportunity at a second chance. And in this case, <clears throat> I believe it is so important because of what this person has to offer to so many kids. I hear all the time that we focus too much on sports and should focus more on education. 
in many ways I agree with that. But the more I've thought about it, I've come to realize that there's so much education that kids get from sports, and some of it is just as important as classroom education. Character building, teamwork, and general life lessons are a huge part of sports. And when the right person is at the helm, the experience a child gets from that sport is priceless. Once our children get to middle school, a coach has more opportunity than any one teacher to make an impact on a child simply because they spend more time with them on a daily basis when a sports is in, sport is in season. In realizing this, I wonder how we can allow a coach who has in one year had such an impact on so many young girls and by all accounts appears to have a long-term plan to continue to do so, just go by the wayside. The experience our girls are offered through her is above and beyond what I ever thought possible. I cannot express in words how deeply saddened I am to think that my kids and so many others in our community are now going to miss out on such a special experience. I've heard from others who are involved in other high school sports that they've never experienced a coach from another sport being so supportive of girls who are two and three sport athletes urging them to go to their in-season sport practice above the sport she is heading and being supportive in general of other sports by offering to share gym time whenever possible. Her commitment to not only our girls basketball program but to zebra athletics and athletes all around is something you don't often find and I fear we may never find again. She is an asset to our community and it saddens me to think we do not allow someone with so much to give a second chance. If we continue to toss coaches so swiftly, we will be lucky to ever get worthy candidates for any coaching job in the school system. We live in a society, society of disposability, but not everything should be so easily disposable. Thank you. Danielle Jones again, can I ask a question? <clears throat> to the board, can you ask out of the student body that's here, how many have been affected by Coach Fluger? Just to see the response. We could ask that question. I'm going to read this. And I appreciate everything you guys have said. I, I do. I have a daughter in the program as well. I hope she remains famous. Because I get it. And you're right. I understand where you're coming from. I'm going to read to you exactly. Do we all make mistakes? Yes, we do. Should you be given a second chance? Unless they're so egregious? Probably, yeah. I have been too. I'm going to read this again. And please understand. As of late as this afternoon, because of people who have emailed me and the staff and the admin, as of this afternoon, the administration team met with Coach Fluger to discuss alternatives to her resignation. After a thorough discussion of those alternatives, she still chose to resign. I understand about second chances. I understand about resignation. I understand exactly what you're saying. I'm not trying to take the air out of the room. I just want you to know as much as I can without divulging about a staff member any of the facts of the case just exactly what happened. Yes, ma'am. Hi, Mr. I find it very hard to believe that it was a discussion this afternoon, but probably more of a bullying session and interrogation. You're certainly entitled to your opinion, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm Carly Bueller. I'm a student at the high school. I'm not on the basketball team, but I'm close with a lot of people that are. I know uh, Coach Fluger, she talked to me multiple times, super nice. I don't have anything against her. But with the situation that happened, I'm a student at the school, and when there are students carrying around things that aren't allowed at school, and puts my safety and a bunch of other people that I care about safety, like, in danger, and an adult, let alone a coach, wasn't didn't address it like they should have, I think that there is an issue with that and that's nobody else's fault and it can't be put on other students or other players by uh, teammates or adults or any other buddy in the situation besides the one person who had the most control over it. Thank you, Ms. Bueller. Yes, sir. My name is Nathan Craig. I'm sorry, one more time. My name is Nathan Craig. Thank you. This is the bravest person that has stood up here in this Amen. room. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> My daughter loves Coach Fluger. Sir, Mr. Craig, if you would please, in a sense of decorum, please just ask the board. Thank you. She sir. loves Coach Fluger. She's done a lot for her this year. Brought her out of her shell. 
But right now, we have a situation in this school where our kids aren't safe. This person, or whatever, the accusations that were made, we all know what it is. This person is still on this campus every day. Yeah, I understand. They're suspended. But they're still on this campus. How can we live with ourselves keeping that threat with our children? You just heard her say, she's scared. I'm scared. And anybody else in this room that has kids here that's not scared after what's happened just last week and every other school shooting, school <coughs> violence in this country, then something's wrong with you. And just like we don't discuss allegations against employee, we don't discuss student information as well. There are protocols in place to address the safety of the school. I will leave it at that. Other public comment? Please. <coughs> Wish we had this kind of attendance at every meeting. Yes, ma'am. Sir, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I want to say something. It's staying upright again. My family farms. My children grew up on a farm. This is a rural community. These children grew up using things as tools that can also be used, you know, looked at as a weapon. My oldest child, many of you know, he graduated last year. He was never in trouble his entire career in school. I don't know if you realize in middle school, he accidentally brought something to school that shouldn't have been there. He didn't realize it was in his sweatshirt and it fell out when he took it off. He went through in school suspension. He wasn't allowed to ride the bus. He is a model student. He graduated here with a 4.0. He didn't hurt anyone. We still have to realize this is a rural community and these things are gonna happen. And you would probably be shocked to know how many of our kids have things on them that are against the rule. I know that it's not right, and I know it's dangerous, and I don't want any child hurt, but we still have accidents. Do you forget to grab your wallet if you left it in another jacket? Do you forget your car keys? You know, these things happen. It doesn't mean someone is a menace to society. We live in a rural community. I've lived through this. Like I said, my kid was never in trouble one time. He accidentally forgot something in his pocket and he went through this. So I don't think we need to criticize this young lady or act like she's a menace and dangerous. Thank yeah. you. I don't. I really don't. It is not a witch hunt. Excuse me, sir. Sit down. Excuse me. Sit down. Sir. The meeting is being run from the chair. Mr. Craig, I will acknowledge you. I will remind you, I've let two people speak twice now. Remember, we talked about three minutes. In fairness, I will, but it will not be accusatory. You will address the board, please, sir. And with all due respect, the young lady in the back had the floor first. So I will address you after her, sir. Yes, ma'am. My name is Haley Jones. I'm part of the basketball team as a freshman. I know that Coach Fluger made a mistake, but she definitely pulled this team together better than I've ever seen any of my coaches ever do. I've been playing 6'6", six, six, since sixth grade, I respect all my other coaches, but she really showed me that we are not varsity and JV. We are not worse than the boys just because we're girls. We are all the same, we're all equal. And I know for a fact that a rumor that is spreading did not happen. And it needs to just be forgotten. She needs to give a, be given a second chance. And I know that everybody makes mistakes, but Everybody gets second chances, and she needs one. She was a good coach. She brought us all together, and with all due respect, she was the best that I've ever had. Thank you. Mr. Craig, you have a four next. I will remind you. You have used up your three minutes. Uh, being public being, I allow it. But I agree that there, there's not going to be a, any more third times, okay? For anybody. Appreciate it. I was not trying to be accusatory at all. And I, I don't want to make a witch hunt towards any student. And I. I believe every student deserves a second chance too. I am just upset that why we are finding out we were getting to the bottom of this. And, and, and I know it sucks to put a, a child in this situation, but to keep them here with everybody else is all 
all I ask it. And I'm sorry if I offended him. No. Thank you, Mr. Sorry. Any other public comment? Yes, sir. Clint Guard. Um, <clears throat> you know, as a as a parent, I guess I'm happy that not happy that a fellow coach has resigned. But as a parent, I think it's important that we all understand school safety's got to be one of the primary concerns that we have every day. Um, as Skeeter said earlier this year in a, in a PD, at some point in time, it's going to happen to our school. It's, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. You remember saying that. Um, so I understand that concern. Um, and I appreciate that concern. I appreciate the people that watch out for my four children that are in the buildings. And, and uh, you know, that's, as I said, that's much appreciated. I think um, from a teacher and a coach perspective, I come at it from two different ways. One, I'm, I'm a little concerned um, as we've, you know, as we've had it now twice in, in a year um, and going out into other communities and, and uh, seeing other coaches and being at the postseason tournaments this year. Um, so from a, from a, and, and I know this is kind of a low level concern, but from a teacher and coach perspective, <laughs> our reputation is getting kind of rough, uh, especially on coaches uh, and, and somewhat on teachers. Um, and I think that needs to be something that we have to be concerned about or we're not going to get good teachers and good coaches. Um, there wasn't a tournament that I didn't go to this year that I didn't hear what is going on at Rochester with, it, with, with coaches. Um, and that's something that I think we just need to be aware of. Um, it's hard getting people to come to this community because it's small. There's not a lot here for new young teachers. Um, so if we want to get good teachers, good coaches, young, old, middle of the road, whatever, we've got to be concerned with that, that reputation. Now, is that more important than our kids? No, but it's still a concern. From a coach's perspective, I'm a little concerned. You know, you hear all kinds of stuff, and I know you guys aren't ever going to say this, but this, my understanding is this happened two or three weeks ago, but was just brought up on Friday. Why? So from a coach's perspective, you know, why, why wasn't it brought up? If we're so concerned about safety and all that, then why was this brought up two to two and a half weeks after it happened? From, from my perspective as a coach, that's a concern. So did I do something six months ago now that can be brought up to, for me to be fired or to resign? You have to be concerned about that because that's, that's a reality. So I think I just, there's some things that, not, not saying I agree or disagree with the decision with Coach Fluger or what happened with that. I, I know very little of the situation. But I think there's some concerns from a teacher and a coach and a parent perspective. While some are good, there's others that I think are valid concerns that we all need to take a look at. Thank you, Mr. Gerard. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm Cheryl Dahlquist. My daughter's Emma. Obviously, um, she's a senior, so I don't really have a vested interest in the program because we're done with the program, but I do hope that the program continues on because I think it's an awesome program. <coughs> when Emma came to me and said, Mom, what the heck is going on? Coach Lisa was just asked to resign or just resigned. I was like, I have no idea. So I'm kind of going off what you said, Clint, in the fact that I was thinking, if this was such a major issue, I would think that we would have heard a lot more of it and there had been more concern about it when it happened than two weeks later. I finally, I texted some parents, finally got an idea of what was going on. I was like, oh yeah, well, I remember her mentioning it, but it wasn't anything that I thought, holy cow, this is really something that's really got me concerned. I saw this as a mistake that needed to be addressed. Maybe Coach Lisa didn't do it through protocol, but has everybody always done everything through protocol? Or have we, like everybody has said, made mistakes? I know we've said she has a checklist of the things that she's supposed to do, but is it just a checklist that goes through very, very hurriedly? Or was she really instructed on the things that she's supposed to do? This is her first year here. She is not a teacher in the building. <coughs> she's a person from the outside trying to do wonderful, awesome things that she has accomplished 
with this basketball program. Again, I have no vested interest. My daughter is a senior. She's not playing basketball. I just want to put it out there that I really think we need to stop and think about how severe the consequence was for the action. Thank you. David Isbell, I think you took a molehill and made a mountain out of it. And it was too big a mountain. You should have stayed down where it was a molehill. My name is Emma Dalquist. I'm a senior, so like my mom said, I'll be gone next year. But when I think about my fellow players being without Coach Lisa, that makes me upset. Like, I'm almost crying now because she's such a great coach. She really cares about you. She's going to work 24-7 to make sure that you have the tools not only to succeed in basketball, but to succeed in life. Um, I'm going to use an example because my brother, his dream in life is to be a basketball coach. And he saw Coach Lisa and he said, that's what I want to be. And he heard everything we had to say about her and he said, that's the coach I want to be. So um, on that standpoint, Coach Lisa is amazing. And then I also, I'm a person who stands up for what is right. Um, so I just think that when it comes to the teammates that I have, there are some that have been seen in a bad light. And being present in the locker room and on the court with them, I just want to say that I trust every single one of the players that I played with, and I don't believe any harm can come from any of them. And I just want to say that so that um, you just understand that I'm not accusing anyone, just that that's understood, that they are all great people. Thank you. Kathleen Isbell again. I would just like to say, whatever coach we have, I sit and watch the girls basketball team because I have a granddaughter that plays on the team. And we don't understand what the coach is thinking. We'd like to have our player out there, but she has certain ones she's going to play. And we, we don't question what she does. We leave it into her hands. She knows what she's going to do. So I don't think parents or grandparents should get involved as to telling what that coach needs to do. That coach knows what she's going to do, and she does the right thing. So let's keep our coach that we have. Thank you. Anyone else? My name is Kendra McKee. Um, I've been playing basketball for several years, but that being I played, <coughs> I played a lot of basketball. I've played on many travel leagues and many all-star games, and I've been to many camps and played at many levels of the sport. Throughout all of this, I've met several coaches, college coaches, AAU coaches, and small town coaches. You name it. With all these coaches, Coach Lisa is the only one I've ever met that has spent hours upon hours watching game film, making scouting reports over every team we face with stats over most of their players, taking every team we face as if it's our last game. She encouraged kids to work hard along with many examples of the outcome. If you are unaware of the 2016 and 17 season, our record was 9 and 14. The current season we had, we were 14 and 9. We had the same people as last year, and I am more than positive that every player on this team agrees. We've all gotten better as individuals and as a team due to Coach Lisa. If you know me, or even if you don't, I'm a very shy person and tend to keep things to myself. I have never felt more comfortable talking to Coach Lisa to a coach than I do Coach Lisa and her coaching staff. I've known Coach Lisa a little over a year and she's not only my coach but my family. The mistake she made was not meant to hurt anyone. She was un uneducated about what to do at the time and did what she thought was right. This is not her fault as a school corporation. The staff should have trained her on what to do if any type of situation came along with this being her first time as a head coach. It was an honest mistake by the player who brought the weapon. It was never flashed and never used immaturely. No threats were made from the player with the knife or players who or players felt intimidated by the weapon. It was never sorry. I don't want to see Coach Lisa go and have to learn a whole new system. Having experience doing that, it's a very hard on the players to memorize in the action of the game. Thank you for all your time. Kindest regards. Anyone else? Yes, sir. I'm Chuck Pocock. Um, 
There's an overwhelming consensus that Lisa has done more good, more positive than negative, obviously. And you guys haven't voted on her resignation, so there's still time to salvage this runaway train and maybe keep it from turning into a train wreck. So, thank you. And Chuck, I'll address that too, based on uh, the emails we got and things of that nature. I want to go back to this last paragraph, and I know you're a pretty smart guy. As late as this afternoon, the administration team met with Coach Fluver to discuss, to discuss alternatives to her resignation. She still chose to resign. I understand that, but maybe yes, the alternatives weren't quite acceptable. Maybe there's more negotiation that can take place there that's workable for both sides. Anyone else? My yes, name is Jim Kerr, I'm granddaughter in the basketball program. And I would just like to think that when you're weighing this decision, the good that the coach has done for and with these student athletes is held equally with her infraction and not influenced by outside persons or the national paranoia that we're currently in about school safety. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Uh, my name is Madison Cranko. I am a junior at Rochester High School. And I just think um, with the whole situation, I just feel as if um, like a part of the student body, I think my number one concern is like me and my brother being safe at school. I mean, I don't want to ever feel like there's a situation that uh, like I'm going to be uncomfortable or unsafe, you know. Like, and I feel as if this situation should have been taken care of another like in another way, so we can feel safe moving on. And if there's a way that she wants to stay and something like she needs to know the rules, she needs to know what's going to happen, she needs to know exactly like what the policies are. Like we're doing all these different programs because there's been all these things happening such as like school shootings and we're doing all these things to prevent these school shootings to put, like know, prepare ourselves to know what we should do. And I just think, I mean with this type of situation, we don't, we're, I mean like we need to like prepare for this, we need to know what to do and I don't think she handled it the way she should have. And that, I mean, that could put us in danger. Thank you, Ms. Anyone else? Going once? Yes, sir. Well, I know I spoke once. Mike Muscle. Um, I'd like to ask more. Can the alternatives that Coach Fluger was offered be made public? No, those are talking to an employee and an employee. We're not going to do that. Place any employee in jeopardy for it. Second question is can they be changed? When we entrust our superintendent to CEO, we expect him or her to do that job. We trust her as a board to do that job. Ultimately, she, she is the boss of the corporation and follows our policy and rules. Coaches, teachers, administrators, everybody have to follow those rules. And if not, there are consequences for those. In this case, as I've read several times, I won't read it again and subject you to that. Opportunities were presented, she still chose to resign. Thank you. Yes, sir. <coughs> Anyone else? I have a question. Sure. Um, in the state school center. I have a daughter who's in third grade, so I'm not really involved in this situation, um, but I do have a question. In the handbook, it states that, um, if I can find it here real quick, sorry. Um, alleged violations of rules should be reported to the school employees. An investigation by the coach, principal, assistant principal, and or athletic director will follow if necessary any of these individuals may investigate. To me, that means she had a right to handle that herself. I don't know the full scope of the story. Um, I did ask Mr. March just out of curiosity to, to send me um, 
what was signed and it was rather lengthy and I can see as a coach how that would be extensive to remember everything so I would just say going forward um, that maybe we have a little bit more extensive training for coaching staff uh, to handle these oddities that we that we're having and um, I would love to have her back so if there's any way to do that I'm for it <laughs> yeah, Cheryl Dolphus again. I just want to end on one note, maybe it won't be the end, but maybe it will be. It's that we live in a world that is dictated by being fearful. Fear of what's going to happen and what's, you know, we send our kids to school, are they going to be okay? And I understand that. I understand that because I wouldn't want any child to be hurt in any fashion. But at some point we have to say, was Coach Lisa or anybody was there, all was there motives to put a child in harm? I don't think so. I think we've heard today that all she's ever done has been positive in regards to these kids. I think she made a poor choice. I really wish we didn't live in a world where what's right is wrong, what's wrong is right, and that we always have to be fearful of what's going to happen, but we do, and I understand that. But I think sometimes we gotta look and really weigh it and say, can somebody make a decision that goes against the zero tolerance that we seem to have in our world today. And it makes sense because I think in a lot of times it does. We just have to be bold enough to say yes to it. Thank you. Anyone else? Go once. Yeah. Tanya, you've already spoken twice and thank you, but I'm going to, as I kept my word, I'm going to keep it with everyone there, okay? I'm sorry, but that's the way we're going to hold the rules. Anyone else? Going once. Going twice. Public discussion on this is closed. I uh, wanted to say thank you as well. Uh, there's a lot of emotion in something like this. Speaking as Brad Weaver, it, it, we seem to have become a zero defect society and, and people do deserve second chances. And you can tell by our statement that that occurred. We can argue the what is, where to force, the whys and whatever for however, but the stat, fa fact remains. After that, she resigned. Okay. Is there a motion to accept Mrs. F Coach Fluger's resignation? Sorry. Who? Choose either one. Choose either one? Yeah. Choose Sandy, one. you're the matron of the board, so we'll take <laughs> you. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Jenny. All in favor of accepting Coach Fluger's resignation, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries five to zero. Other superintendent's business. Oh, wait a second. You know what, out of fairness, I did it for about so if you would like to leave now, I realize there's going to be some feelings. If you'd like to leave, you're certainly welcome to. You're also welcome to stay. <coughs> principals will be sending out information um, the window of opportunity or the window for those lessons will open up Friday at the closure of school and will run through the following Monday at 4 o'clock what was the second date you said I didn't February oh I'm sorry March 3rd okay 
Um, yeah, February 24th, March 3rd. And so we will make sure that both the high school and middle school are open. We will have teachers available to help with those. We will have call line numbers that we will have provided on our website. So if you are at home and begin to experience those troubles, the tech department will be there as well. But we want to do all that we can to be supportive in that too. So other than that, hopefully we'll have good weather moving on from here. <laughs> As we always do at the end of every meeting, is there any public discussion other than the Coach Fluger resignation? Or anything you'd like to talk about publicly? I just want to real quick say I've got two IAs that have resigned. I uh, want to thank them for their service at Columbia. They've done a fabulous job for us. Uh, they've both got uh, other <coughs> opportunities and other places, movements, and I won't get into all that, but they've done a fabulous job for us. Uh, Kathleen Davis and Courtney Redden. Uh, they've worked really well, become part of our Columbia family, and we just wish them the best. So as they as they look uh, um, into the future and, and move move on with their plans, so they've done a fabulous job. Thank you, well, you Mr. Hobbs. I'm so Sorry. happy to see all four principals sitting in the room. Although they didn't want to sit with you. I know, because it's such a fade week. We also would have mentioned that there's lots of along with that. be a lot of tractors in the parking lot. <laughs> yeah, beware. <laughs> they got the breakfast too, right? Yes, so just honor them also since that's a big week for our FFA. Mr. Hobbs? Real quick, um, Friday, uh, Mrs. Murphy, myself, and Marty Minier attended a meeting in Indianapolis. We are going to be one of 17 middle schools in Indiana to kick off champions together at the middle school level. And so we have some pretty neat ideas going on there. Uh, we will rely on our public um, sponsorships and stuff as well. So we'll get some information out about that. But we got a pretty neat thing getting ready to happen at the middle school with champions together with some track stuff and some basketball stuff. Basketball probably during the school day, but track we're going to have one event during one of our home track meets. So it's something that we're kind of excited about. It's going to be really neat for not just our special needs population, but it's going to be led by the students. We're going to put a committee together with students on it, and we're going to step out of the students' way is how the guy, Lee Lonzo is his name, that helped us out get organized, and he said your best bet as an adult is to shut your mouth and stand back and watch the students make it happen, so that's what we're going to do. Any other comment? Is there any other business to discuss? Any comments or questions from the board? In that case, we'll consider the meeting adjourned.